Who is Jesus to you? He's my everything worth having. He's my King of Kings. He's my Lord of Lords. He's my commander. He is my provider. He's my deliverer. He's my savior. He's my best friend. You know, he's my, he's my bridegroom. He goes before me and he goes behind me and he's, he's what I lean on every single day. Not only do I lean on him, but he's the reason I can lean. You know, the breath of life. And so, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and He's my God.
Yeah.
it shall be a glorious day. Amen. When the saints shall be gathered around the throne, there shall be no more sorrow. There shall be no more dying. There shall be no more parting. There shall be, there shall be a day of farewell to sorrow. Amen. To you be all the glory, Lord. To you be all the honor, Lord. And to you be all the nourishment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let the saints shout, Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the hour of your word. Speak to us even at this hour. Speak to us even now, O God. Let your voice be so strong in our spirit now this afternoon. That it shall bring a change to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let the same shout hallelujah. 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 Last Sunday we started talking about wisdom is the principal thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> wisdom is the principal thing. We also try to define knowledge that deals with facts, with information, skills developed through experience and education. We also try to define understanding, which is comprehension and interpretation. It is the practical aspect of the theory we have learned in life and in prayer. Praise the Lord. And also we define wisdom as knowledge, understanding, and application. So that wisdom actually is the application of understanding. And it has to do with good judgment. Yeah. Amen. And we, and we start at where? Why we need wisdom. I hope that is where we started. I mean, where we stopped. Is that right? No, we stopped at uh, how do we obtain wisdom? Eh? How do we obtain wisdom? How do we obtain wisdom? That's where we stopped. And so we are going to start with a why we need wisdom. You see, if God should make it emphatically clear to us that wisdom is the principal thing in life, that wisdom is the major thing in life, and the Bible go, went on to counsel us that in all our getting, get in everything we get in this life, that we should make sure that wisdom is among them. And that tells us the importance of wisdom in a successful life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the principal thing. And therefore, in all your getting, get wisdom. In all your getting, get knowledge. In all your getting, get understanding. Because you may gain you may gain knowledge, but without wisdom, the knowledge will amount to nothing. But until that very knowledge is translated into action, you are able to apply it. That is when that knowledge, that learning, that training and experience of life becomes very, very beneficial. Praise the Lord. And so this morning we are going to continue. Where we stopped, and we are starting with why we need God's wisdom. Why do we need God's wisdom? Because wisdom is the principal thing. And if we fail to get wisdom, then we've gotten nothing. And simply, wisdom is very, very important. We need wisdom, number one, 
Because we have dreams and plans to build. We need wisdom. Because we have dreams to build. We have plans to fulfill. Praise the Lord. If you have plans here, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you have a dream that must be fulfilled, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And therefore, it simply means that everybody here needs wisdom. You see it? So for dreams of life to come to pass, demands wisdom. Joseph had a dream that one day his father and mother and the 11 brothers will come bowing down to him. Bowing down before him. And it was wisdom that had led him. Even when he was being tempted, it was wisdom that protected him. And so we need wisdom in order to build. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 24. And we read from verse 3 and 4. He said, Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Do you have a career you want to build in this life? You need wisdom. Do you have a home you think you want to build? You have wisdom. Do you have children you want to bring up in the fear of God so that they become prosperous in this life? You have wisdom. That is why the Bible calls it the principal thing in life. And it says, through wisdom, a house is built. It is wanting to build a house. It's another thing after building that very house, the inside of uh, the call it the interior decoration, you know? Oh. It takes wisdom to begin to decorate that very house. Hallelujah. And it says, by knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. If you lack that very wisdom, you will not be able to apply the knowledge you have in making that very house you want to build to become so beautiful. Hallelujah. In your home, in your home, you want to build your home so that peace will rule and reign. You need the wisdom of God. Because you, if you are not building your home, you are scattering your home. It is the food that scatters her home. But the wise builds her home. Praise the Lord. Number two, we need God's wisdom because we have battles to fight. <laughs> And you might ask, what is the place of wisdom in fighting battles? You see, it takes a wisdom to fight every battle of life. If you go down to verse 6 and 7, okay, we take it from verse four, 5. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases in strength. And so wisdom gives you strength. Wisdom increases your strength. And so we come to verse 6. It says, for by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of our counselors, there is safety. Hallelujah. In the battle of life, you need wisdom in all 
order to map out the strategies to fight the, the battles of life. You remember what happened when I, David, King David was running away, when, when he was running away because of a insurrection in his house, because his son, Absalom, was pursuing him. And the Bible said that, that he was on the run. And as he was running, there was a relative of a king saw. Share me that met him on the way. And he was insulting him, casting stones on him. Say, this is what, what you deserve. Because you took the kingdom from my relative, I saw. Do you know that could be a, that was a distraction? It, uh, one, of his, uh, one of his soldiers said, can we kill this person? He said, no, 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 leave him, leave him, leave him alone. Perhaps it may be God that told him to instruct, instruct me. <laughs> he refused to be distracted. That is wisdom. It's not every battle of life that you will, you will, you will get yourself into. It's not everything, everything you must quarrel about. It takes wisdom for you to see a battle coming and you say, this battle is a distraction. I will not be involved in it. This year, battles will come in form of distractions. Mm -hmm. And if you are bent on fighting every battle of this year, you will end up losing your time. The time is supposed to invest in other than operations. If you use the quarrel about every word this year, receive wisdom. Amen. Receive wisdom. Amen. To know when to close your mouth and when to speak. You need, you need wisdom to fight the battles of life. And the scripture is very, very pointed. It said, by the wise counsel, or by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in the multitude of counselors, they are safety. You need a wise counsel this year. When you are confronted with challenges of life, that's why the Bible tells us that uh, when you have good counselors, you will be safe because they will not deceive you. Hallelujah. Number three, we need God's wisdom. Because there is success we must achieve this year. There is what? Success we must achieve this year. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, if the knife or if the iron is blunt and you do not sharpen that very iron or the knife, you must put more strength. You must expend more strength. This is a tree and you want to cut this very tree. And you know that what the, the weapon you have is a knife or an ash. If you want to cut this very tree and you are using a knife that is blunt, that is not sharp, it might take you a whole week to cut it down. But wisdom will tell you that uh, if you sharpen this knife, what will take you a whole week will take you hours to bring it down. The plans you have this year, you need wisdom in order to approach them. If you must succeed concerning the plans you have this year, 
If you must see the expectations you have this year come to pass, you need God's wisdom. God's wisdom in handling your time. God's wisdom in knowing when the enemy wants to distract you. God's wisdom not to procrastinate. Not to be lazy to walk when you must walk. And not to go to sleep when you ought to walk. Praise the Lord. Jericho as a city was a city the Bible said that was very very tough, impregnable. But when you have the instructions of God and by the instructions of God you, you engage the battles of this very life. You engage your plans in this very life. It will become easy. It will become simple. God does not want us to labor so much in order to achieve little. That's why he is telling us this year that we should apply his own wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There is a success you must achieve this year. And you cannot achieve it by human wisdom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot achieve it by human wisdom. Because wisdom truly will teach you how to resolve issues of life. And that has to come with dealing with God who is the author of our wisdom. I was listening to Dada Deboe some time ago. He said that he was doing his uh, dissertation, his uh, PhD dissertation and uh, <laughs> There are a number of, as a mathematician, there's a number of equations you must, he was given a number of equations to resolve. And he said he worked and worked and worked on it so much and um, it became too difficult. So then he decided to relax and worship God. And the time very process, God told him to bring the, 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 the equation and he began to tell him, separate this one. This right, this one, this left, solve this one together, solve this one together. And he said, What he labored for days, for months, for a long time was resolved within a short time. God's will is done. He also went on to say that uh, he was given an assignment to do by his professor. And when the professor came back, he submitted the, the something to him. The man looked at him and said, Tell me, who helped you to, to do this very project? <laughs> he, said, he said, it is Professor Emmanuel. <laughs> because if you call him Jesus, because the man is not a believer, he said, the man will just uh, will take it like that. So the man asked him, Professor Emmanuel from preach from preach at department. <laughs> Hallelujah. She so said it's from the this Emmanuel is a, is a professor of all departments. So we are talking about the wisdom of God for you to succeed and achieve success and something tangible this year. We need the wisdom of God. Number four. Why do we need the wisdom of God? Because we need the counsel of God. We need God's guidance. We need God's counsel. 
Don't forget we are where we read earlier that uh, in the midst of the multitude of councils, they are receptive. Mm -hmm. They are receptive, Lord. And so we need God's counsel. And thank God he has promised that he is going to cancel us. Mm -hmm. Say, I will cancel you with my eyes upon you. And this promise, beloved, is for the sons and daughters of the living God. And if you are one, then you must seek God's counsel. Hallelujah. Amen. Behold, the eyes of the Lord is on those who fear him. The eyes of the Lord is on those who fear him. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And I will guide you with my eyes upon you. Declares the word of God. In Psalm 32, verse 8. When God cancels you, you become a wonder to the people around you. The Bible spoke concerning Ahitophel. And Ahitophel was the counselor of King David. And that was why David was successful in all his military expeditions. Because he had a good counselor. And so it happened that when there was when Absalom rose against him, even Ahitophel joined Absalom. And one of the greatest things that pained him was when he heard that even Ahitophel was with Absalom. Ah, he cried. And what he said, Oh God. Turn the counsel of Ahitophel into foolishness. And truly, when Absalom called uh, the, his counselors, he asked them, Tell me, because what David did, did also was to send another man, one of his faithful, to go so that he will, uh, he will counter the, uh, the counsel of Ahitophel. And so he said, Ahitophel. Tell me, what is your counsel? How do we go about this very war? Don't forget, by, by, by wisdom you wait war. Ahitophel told him, pursue David immediately because he, he is already tired. Very, very tired. And if you pursue him right now, surely you will overtake him. And that is true. But uh, David's, I mean, David's uh, other faithful man he sent in order to counter the, the counsel of Ahitophel went. And um, Absalom asked him, is it the way you want to show faithfulness to, you, to your friend, my father? He said, I serve the father. Why won't I also serve the son? He said, now give us your counsel. He said, you know that your father is a man that is killed in war. He has fought battles all his life. And right now, he is like a wounded lion. And so the best thing is to not to pursue him. Try and gather all these men together and then by, by tomorrow we can pursue him. <laughs> and that was how he discredited the cancer of death. And that was how David escaped death in the hand of of uh, Absalom and his man. Wise and godly counsel. It can deliver your life. It can make you succeed in life. Hallelujah. I don't know who needs this very wisdom this very year, but I know that I need it. I need it. I know that I need it. Wisdom of God will empower you so much so that when you begin to walk, people will begin to imagine. 
It will separate you from every other person around you. Counsel. Counsel. Why do you think that every government has teams of counselors around them? Advisors. Every king, every kingdom. And these are counselors are not ordinary men. They are men that their wisdom has been tested and tried. Praise the Lord. Any government, any, any president that, that does not have a good counselor is bound to fail. It's so simple. And now God is in him dwells all wise counsel because he's called the all wise God. And so we need him. For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to give you hope even the expected end. God has declared that people for those plans to come to pass, you need the wisdom of God. And the first wisdom he tells you that he said, Then you will come and pray unto me. Mm -hmm. You will come to seek me and pray unto me. And I will do what? Hear you. When you seek me with all your heart. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We need divine counsel. Number five, divine wisdom because mm -hmm. life or the world is so rugged. The world is full of tongues. It's so dangerous. And the world is becoming dangerous by day, as day passes. Praise the Lord. And so for you to navigate safely through this journey of life, we need God's wisdom. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Jesus was talking to his disciples after sending them out. He said, Behold, verse 16, sorry. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of the wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpent and harmless as dogs. Hmm. So the world is a den of lions. And for you to be able to live safely and not be devoured by the lions of this life, you need the wisdom of God. He said, be wise as serpent. Serpent is known to be wise and cunning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Beloved, you see the reason why you need wisdom this year. You see the reason why our children need wisdom in this life. And we must be committed to teaching them wisdom. And the true wisdom is the wisdom of God. Not the wisdom of the world. For the wisdom of the world is a corrupted wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so we are going to look at the characteristics of godly wisdom. The nature of godly wisdom. You know that there are different types of wisdom. You have the wisdom of God. You have the wisdom of the world. 
You have the wisdom of man. Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is the end of the, is the way of destruction. It takes wisdom for you to understand that you are not safe in your own way. In your own wisdom. Only a fool is wise in his or, or her own eyes. Praise the Lord. Characteristics of godly wisdom. James chapter 3. And we read from verse 13 to verse 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by the good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Wisdom has works or has results. He said, Who is a he that is wise among you? Show us by your conduct. A wise person conducts himself or herself very, very wisely, very, very well. Praise the Lord. It's very, very important. And so it goes on in verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. But it is earthly, sensual, and demonic. And you see the two, two different types of wisdom now. The wisdom that is from God and the wisdom that is from God. The war of Satan. For where envy and self seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. If you have the wisdom of God, you will never be confused in this life. Yes. But as a child of God, when you get confused, you know where you can go for clearance. Is anyone among you that lack wisdom? Let him ask. And it will be given him by God. Who gives without finding fault? Praise the name of the Lord. So, number one, the wisdom. We're talking about the characteristics of a God's wisdom or godly wisdom. Number one, it is pure. As we see in verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy, fully summarized. Hallelujah. So, first of all, the wisdomly wisdom is pure, it is uncorrupted. Hallelujah. It is true. The motive is pure. The motive is genuine. It is not false. Praise the Lord. Number two, it is peaceable. So the wisdom of God seeks for peace. It fosters a peace. It provokes. It it, it, it Yeah, it um, Fosters peace, it provokes peace among uh, every relationship. Hallelujah. It is not selfish. Hmm. Number three, it is gentle. The wisdom of God is exhibited in gentleness. It is not violent. It is always calm. Hallelujah. It does not start war. It is very, very cons considerate. It is very, very controlled. Hallelujah. It speaks at 
last. How do you know somebody that is wise? In a meeting. And the floor is open for people to air their view. There are people that want to be heard first. And they will talk and talk and talk and talk. But the wise person will keep silent. And when everybody has finished speaking, he will then speak. And when he speaks, everybody will say what he said is the right thing. Wisdom does not make noise. Mm -hmm. It's calculated. He speaks last. And when he speaks, every controversy is settled. Hallelujah. Number four, the wisdom of God is submissive. It is submissive. Meaning that it is teachable. It can be corrected. You know, there are a lot of people that are not teachable, but they believe that they are wise. Anybody that is not teachable, that is the first sign that the person is a fool, that the person is not wise. And when you are speaking, you hold your own opinion as if it's the first and the last. That person cannot be corrected. It's a sign that the person lacks wisdom. Yeah. But the wisdom that is from above is teachable. The Bible said that the wise man will hear and increase in his wisdom. But the foolish will not even want to hear correction. If you are always willing to hear and increase in your knowledge, in your understanding, simply means that you are wise. But if you are the one that is impatient, you don't want to hear another person's opinion, it's a sign of foolishness. And that wisdom is not of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is peace, it is merciful. Because God is merciful. The wisdom that comes from him is merciful. Oh, we are discussing. And um you raised, a, you, are, you raised an issue. And that issue, I don't like it. And instead of I coming down to reply you and try to explain to you, I will say, who are you? Begin to abuse you at this time. I say, you don't even know what you're saying at this time. That is not the reason of God. That is not the wisdom of God. First of all, the wisdom of God we want to give you a written space. Even if a way, when the person is talking nonsense, gives him or her attention concentration. Space if he forgives. Anybody that does not forgive will lack the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. okay. Hallelujah. Characters of God's wisdom. Number six, bears good fruits. The wisdom of God is productive. Hallelujah. Productive in good deeds, not in evil deeds. The wisdom of God is hard working, it is not lazy. If you want to change this year, say no to laziness. The foolish will say, I, I'm tired of hearing. Is it not the same thing? That, this, uh, okay, you go to a conference and you have uh, two, three speakers. And the first person after speaking, they say, I, I'm tired. Is it not the same thing that all of them will speak? But the wise will come down. Take notes. Of what the speakers presented goes who studies them, understands them, has gained knowledge, information, and then begins to apply them in his daily life. 
That is how you bear fruit. Praise the Lord. Number seven, it is impartial. The wisdom of God does not look at faces. It is not a man's a man pleaser. He says the truth and the truth. Nothing more, nothing less. It does not mean swords in order to just uh, play with words. No. Impartial. It's not double faced. When you are talking about being double faced, stop talking about hypocrisy. You know, the wisdom of God is so plain, there's no hypocrisy in the wisdom of God. That was why the Pharisees, they had the wisdom of man. And they, Jesus called the hypocrites double-faced human beings. That, that, that look at man, they respect man, they look at faces before they judge. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Impartial is just. Not men pleasers. It's always authentic. Remember what, what made Solomon popular the first that judgment he gave? The two prostitutes. One said, this is my son. The other one said, this is my son. Everybody has been to the son. That's all of them. Everybody has that. So he looked at them. Who is he supposed to side? You need God's wisdom in order to give good judgment. That is what makes you just. And today, we Christians, we are understanding. You are my sister. And there's a case that, uh, that, that came to me. And it is clear to me that uh, you are at fault. And because you are my sister, mm -hmm. <laughs> I will turn it the other way. <laughs> Impartial. Does not show favor. Praise the name of the Lord. And we saw how he joined that very case. Glory be to God. Amen. With that, hypocrisy. You know, a hypocrite is an actor. It's an actor, you know that? Yes. There is, there is a, um, a, um, is it a movie or how do you call, do you call it? There's a play we want to act now. Oh, that might want to act now. So he, he's going to act as a King Solomon. Another person is going to act as who? So they go. Another name. There go. <laughs> so, so, so he's acting as there go. <laughs> and he's acting as a King Solomon. But you are not King Solomon. Yeah. No, that is it. A hypocrite and an actor. That's actually the great definition of a hypocrite. Uh, actor. Somebody playing the part he or she is not. not. That is not our God. And that is not God's wisdom. So you don't answer it. Glory be to God. The wisdom of God is sweet. I love this. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 24. We Proverbs 24. Verse 13, it says, My son, eat honey because it is sweet. And the honeycomb because so because it is good. And the honeycomb because or the honeycomb which is sweet to your taste. 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul if you have found it. 
there is a prospect and your hope shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it tells you that as the honey is, is good and the honeycomb is sweet, so is the sweetness of our wisdom. Hallelujah. And so, if you want sweetness in the journey of life, embrace wisdom. Hallelujah. And verse 14, it says, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be in your soul. It's sweet in so much. If you have found it, there shall be a prospect. What's the next translation? It says, there shall be a reward. Hallelujah. Wisdom has the reward of the Lord. Wisdom has good prospect in life. Praise the name of the Lord. And that reward and prospect will separate you from the crowd. And then, and your hope shall not be cut off or short. You know, we go this very scripture, the Bible said that my hope shall not be cut short. And that is true. But if you ask foolishly, how dare you put that very scripture? That scripture is for the wise. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And my hope shall not be cut short. If I am wise. And my hope shall not be cut short. If you are wise. This year, whatsoever be your hope, whatsoever be your expectation, if you will key into the wisdom of God, that hope, that expectation shall not be cut off in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Beloved, we are talking about the principal thing in life. In all your getting. Say wisdom is the principal thing. In all your getting. Get wisdom. Get understanding. And that is the only way. Prospect is assured. Reward is assured. Success is assured. Fruitfulness is assured. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That is the way forward. That is the safe way or the safe means of navigating through the troubled waters of this very life. Wisdom of God. Glory be to God. We are going to continue next, next week and begin to, we will look at the benefits of wisdom. Glory be to God. The Lord, the only said, the and the call of heaven that we should embrace wisdom. That you we should get wisdom in everything we get. That we should desire wisdom among everything we desire. So that our dreams will come to pass. So that our expectations and hopes will not be cut short. Wisdom is demanded. Wisdom is needed. And that is the reason why the Holy Spirit is impressing upon us even this day, even this month, even this year, that we should arise and say no to foolishness, that we should arise and say no to the wisdom of man, that we should arise and embrace the wisdom of God. The wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure. Hallelujah. Uncorrupted wisdom. Uncorrupted wisdom. Some people, when they want to give you advice, <laughs> you see, sometimes when I look at a water, some of our these are movies they play. Okay, two of you are friends, eh? And you have a fiancé. And you introduce your fiancé to your good friend, eh? And then your fiancé will begin to give you a counsel that will do what? That will destroy the relationship. The wickedness of the wisdom of man. That is why you need godly counselors if you must 
strengthened way this year. I don't know who has been your counsel. I don't know who you have trusted your life and your destiny in his or her hand. But Lord, I want to introduce you to that very person that can never fail. That person that can never deceive you. That person that is dependent. His name is Jesus. He is called He's called the author of wisdom. He's called the wisdom of the world. Yes, for the Greeks that seek for wisdom and the Jews seek for signs and wonders. And, and there in their own wisdom, they could not have known God. But we, through the foolishness of what is preached, we are saved. Jesus, the wisdom of God. And the power of God. Do you want to have the power to succeed this year? Embrace Jesus, the wisdom of God, the power of God. Do you want the wisdom to navigate through the waters of this very year? You need Jesus, who is the wisdom of God. Open your mouth and begin to talk to him. Begin to talk to him. Father, we adore you. Lord, we Uproot from my life, uh, every evil counselor, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Remove from our lives, uproot from our lives, Lord, every evil cancer, in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray for your children. Let us begin to pray for our sons and daughters.